So let's say you've made the decision and you said, you know what, I do want to get funded. I do want to go ahead and do one of these challenges. This is how you can prepare. So firstly, you need to realize the truth, right? Remember the conflict of interest and by them simply calling it a challenge, subconsciously, that's going to cause you to feel like you want to prove yourself and pass this challenge. So the first thing you want to do to prepare is build a baseline of consistency. Now, what do I mean? Well, firstly, have a fully defined trading plan, right? If you haven't got a written trading plan and a written set of rules, you're not trading, you're now gambling, and you're probably never gonna be able to be consistent over time. Because I'm not talking about being able to pass the challenge once, I'm talking about how to be able to have that challenge passed and how to consistently make profits on those accounts, or again, your own account consistently grow over time. So we need to firstly build that baseline of consistency. And what do I mean by that? Have your system full, fully defined, entries, exits, trade management, risk appetite, everything you need to know should be predefined. From there, you need to know your system, right? You need to know when you're entering, when you're exiting, when you're gonna take partial profits, how much you're gonna risk, the times you're willing to trade and the times you're not willing to trade. And from this baseline, right, let's say you've never traded before. You need to be able to trade on a demo account first for at least three to six months, in my opinion, of a consistent growth. Now. Once you can do that on your demo account of at least three to six months of consistent growth, then you can go ahead and transition to your own live account. Now, once you've gone got to that live account, I would again say three to six months of consistent growth. Again, don't rush guys. There's no rush to pass these challenges. Like you think they're really gonna go anywhere? No, yo, these challenges are never gonna go anywhere. Like they'll, they'll trust me, they'll be there tomorrow. They'll be there next year. Don't rush it. Build that baseline of consistency first where you can grow it on the demo account, you can trade your own live account, even if it's $100, it doesn't matter, be able to have that baseline of consistency. So that now, when you go onto this account, it's nothing new to you trading it. You know, okay, I've proven to myself in the past, I have a system that works. No matter what I do, as long as I follow these rules, as long as I stick to these rules, my account will be positive in equity at the end of the period. So now when you're approaching these accounts, there's no uncertainty, there's no guesswork. You know, and you've experienced, and you're now convicted that your system works. So all you're doing now is doing the same thing, which is just executing your system. And again, that's just the goal of trading, to be able to follow a set of rules consistently without over-risking or over-leveraging or deviating from that plan. Furthermore, I think you have to adapt your trading style when you approach these accounts. In what sense? Firstly, I think you have to lower your risk. A 1% risk may be too large, especially with the maximum loss being 10%, if you have 10 losses that will be your whole account gone so firstly lower your risk i don't think you should be risking any more than one percent on these accounts if anything i would say risk half a percent or even quarter of a percent furthermore you don't need high risk to reward trades to pass the challenge to pass the challenge you can do it with one to three risk to rewards with one to four risk to rewards with one to five risk to rewards because you can be consistent with them now i'm not saying high risk to rewards are not consistent because they are because that's how i trade so when you're doing these funded accounts now, you don't have to go for crazy moonshot trades. You can just go for humble one to threes, one to fours, one to fives, and a few of them will let you pass the challenge. Why? Because remember, you're trading a little bit more aggressively because you do have to actually pass in that time period. The next tip I can give you is complete the free trial. A lot of these proprietary funds allow you to do free trials where you can trade on their servers, trade on the demo account and experience how the accounts run. You can experience the rules, you can experience the spread, you can experience the data feed as well. Because that's a whole nother thing. The data feed on these funded accounts, it can be very, very different to the data feed you're seeing on TradingView. And how can that affect you? So for example, let's just say on TradingView, right? You're looking at this candlestick here, right? Amazing drawing, I know, thank you very much. And let's just say on your trading view, right? Your stop loss above this high is 1.00912, hypothetically. Now, if you go on your MetaTrader 4 using the data feed from the proprietary fund, that price point, 1.00912, may actually be down here on the candlestick, or it may even be higher. So how can that affect you in your trading? Well, on your trading view stop loss, it may only be, let's say from your entry is here, hypothetically, and your stop loss is here, on trading view, you may only have a free pip stop loss. The data feed on the account may put your stop loss up here. So instead of having a free pip stop loss now, you may actually have a four or five pip stop loss. So what you can do to counteract that is when you're looking to take your trades is go on the actual data feed on MetaTrader 4, look on the chart and actually see if your levels line up with the candlesticks on the data feed as well. Furthermore, when you're doing the free trial, sometimes they only last a few weeks compared to the normal 
challenge time. For example, with FTMO, I know the trial is two weeks compared to 30 days. So what you can do is give yourself the same time period instead of two weeks, 30 days, and go ahead and complete the trial. I would say don't just complete the trial one time, do it at least two, three, four, five times. The more you can pass the trial, the more data you can build up and prove to yourself that you can do it, the easier it's gonna be to actually trade on it when it comes down to the real moment. End of the day, it's preparation. You have to prepare. For example, Michael Jordan, right? One of the greatest basketballers of all time. He's not in the gym once or taking two or three shots. He's in the gym practicing again and again and again and again and again so that once it comes to the main championship, he can perform to the highest level of his ability with confidence because he knows how good he is in practice. This one's a big one. Don't use your rent money. Some people will be like to me, look, Kieran, I've got $400 to my, to my name. Should I go ahead and do this challenge so that I can go ahead and afford mentorship, so that I can go ahead and afford X, Y, and Z? No, don't use the last money in your account to go ahead and pay for these challenges because now you're falling victim to the industry. Save up, right? Build that consistency on your own accounts first. Then once you're ready, once you can trade your own account three to six months, of course, then you can go ahead and do the challenge. And now you've saved up. You don't really care if you lose that money because you're not riding on it to pay your bills at the end of the month. And that's actually gonna lead us on to our next point, which is not to put it on a pedal stool. Now, to be honest with you, I probably spelled pedal stool wrong, but <laughs> that's not why we're here. We're not here for spelling lessons. We're here for trading education. You see, a lot of people, they think these funded accounts are the end all be alls. It's the only way to make money. It's so amazing. It's so powerful. It's so great. Yo, it's not that deep, man. Like, they're not that amazing. They're not that special. You can do your own compounding. You can grow your own account. There are so many different funding accounts out there. It is ridiculous. So, how can this actually help you now by not putting it on a pedal stool? Because if you put it on a pedal stool, what you're doing is you're thinking it's worth so much and, you're, and, you're, and you may now associate your happiness and your self-worth with being able to pass that challenge. So if you, for example, go ahead and fail that challenge, you now may get really sad, really upset because you didn't pass it. And that can have knock-on effects to your home life, your relationships and your trading. Realize guys, it's not that deep, man. Like, Trading is not everything. Sometimes you've got to put things into perspective. You know, you've got a roof over your head, you've got internet to watch this video, and you've got food in your stomach. Life's good. And there's a lot of people out there who would kill to be in your position where you're in right now. So just because you failed a challenge, just because you haven't passed it yet, just because you're not consistent where you want to be just yet, doesn't mean you will ever you'll not make it. Because you you get exactly what you put in. If you're not getting the results you want, simply because we haven't put in enough just yet, and that's okay. Trading is the only industry where we can come into it and think in our first few weeks, our first few months, we can be a millionaire. Understand that this is a profession. You know, you wouldn't go into a medical school and after a few months or a few years, expect to be getting paid a, a six year, 20 year doctor salary. No way, right? You understand that in medical school or in dentistry or any other, you know, profession, because trading is a profession as well, that it takes time to study. You have to study first. And after years of hard work and study, then you can go ahead and get the job. Then you can go ahead and get paid. It's the same thing in trading. Why do you think it's any different? So let go. Let go from trying to pass the challenge. Let go from even caring. Like, you should not literally not care if you pass or fail the challenge. That's the thing. If it fails, eh, who cares? If it passes, eh, who cares? So they've realized it's not that deep. It's not the end of the world if you fail a challenge. Because what can happen if you fail a challenge and you start getting upset because maybe you've traded with your rent money, maybe you haven't got that baseline of consistency, what's going to happen now is you're going to go down a negative spiral and more, and you're going to get worse. Because now maybe you might want a revenge trade. Maybe you want to prove yourself and now you're getting more money to go and do another challenge to go and pass it. Or your self-esteem may take it and you may think, oh my God, I can't pass this challenge. I'm never going to make it. And you're just getting worse and worse and worse. So realize it's really not that deep. It's just a challenge. It doesn't affect your self-worth as a human. You are great. You don't need trading. You don't need a funded account. These funded accounts need you. So before you go ahead and jump into these funded accounts, guys, build that baseline of consistency. That's the first thing. Prove to yourself that you can trade your own system and now it'll be a complete different approach. It won't be now, oh, I'm going to pass the challenge. It's gonna be, oh, I'm just executing my system. And the result of me executing my system is the challenge being passed. Very different paradigms there. Another thing, your focus should not be on a monetary value. Whether that's your own account, whether it's a proprietary fund, your focus should be on terms of percent. When I look at my MT4 and I'm up in profit, I don't think about how much money I'm up. I think about how much percent I'm up relative to my account balance. 
When you're doing that, you want to be realistic. You know, guys, a 10% month puts you in the top 5% of traders in the world. If we look at Bridgewater Associates, right? One of the largest hedge funds in existence, their gains is around 7.8%. But well, that was in December. So realizing, guys, a 10% month is phenomenal. And if you can do that, again, you are putting yourself light years ahead. And when I say focus on percent, I don't mean percentage targets. I mean, don't look at it in terms of money. Look at it in terms of percentage. Because that is now switching to the investor style. Because with percentages, it can be scaled. With profits, it's not really scalable. Percentages, yes, 100%. Because if you can, on your demo account or on your smaller personal account, if you can do that by 10% a month, yo, these challenges, you're going to piss all over them. They ain't going to be hard. They're only hard probably because A, you're scared of them, B, you're putting them on a pedal stool, or C, you haven't got your own baseline of consistency. You can't trade as it is. So why are you jumping into these funded accounts expecting to pass it? And again, I don't mean that to be horrible, guys. I'm just trying to give you the truth about this because I'm telling you what no one else won't. And they ain't going to tell you this because they want you to click on their affiliate link and sign up to the challenge. Another thing, don't use signals. Oh my days. Why would you use signals? I know why, because you think you can get a guaranteed pass and easy free money. <laughs> hmm. To be honest with you, a lot of these signal group chats are garbage anyway. Why? Because a lot of the signal services are, again, affiliates introducing brokers. They're making money off you, whether you win or lose. Plus, even if you do pass a challenge using a signal service, what happens if that signal service goes down? Cool, you've got a funded account, but you ain't going to be able to make no money on it because you never got there. If you can get there yourself, you can build that consistency yourself and pass it yourself. You don't need anyone else. You don't need a signal service. Plus, side note, a lot of these signal services are just filled with garbage anyway. It'll be someone in a group chat calling out a trade, and he'll be, and then someone in that chat will send it to their own chat, and someone in that chat will send it to their own chat, and it'll just get diluted, and by the time you got the signal, mate, the entry is probably millions of years gone anyway. And you know what? The most important one, in my opinion, is let go. Yo, who cares, man? It's not that deep. These challenges are not the end of the world. They're not the end or be all. It's not going to be the only way you can be a successful trader. Just because you you've maybe failed a challenge recently, just because you haven't passed it yet, doesn't mean anything. Where you are right now is not an indication of where you're going. This is just a step in your journey. And God, or whatever you believe in, always gives the toughest battles to the strongest soldiers. So if you're kind of going through a rut right now, if you're not maybe getting the results you want, yo, let go. Who cares? Sometimes holding on to things causes a lot more damage than letting go. Release your attachment to passing the challenge. Focus on being able to build your own consistency, being able to get your own equity curve growing. And now when you go on the account, hey, it's going to be a walk in the park because you've got that consistency first and you're letting go from trying to pass it. You're letting go from stopping yourself from failing. You realize, okay, cool. If I do it and I fail, eh, is what it is. If I do it and I pass, eh, is what it is. You just have that neutral approach. Let go from it. But Kieran, I just failed the challenge. Oh my God, what should I do? Yo, take a walk. <laughs> Literally, guys, like if you just fail the challenge or if you do fail, understand that that doesn't determine your successfulness as a trader. Because remember, there's so many more conditions now and factors that are going to affect you. So if you do end up failing a challenge, firstly, you need to figure out why you failed that challenge. Go back and journal your trades. Go take a look, figure out what happened and what led to those trades failing. Take a bit of time off before you jump back into your challenge. Go do some more back testing, go do some more demo trading, go do another free trial. Prove to yourself, build that conviction that you can do it. Again, it's like surgery. You know, you wouldn't go and operate open heart surgery on someone in your first few years of medical school, no. You'd practice on dummies, you'd practice on animals, and then eventually, once you've got qualified, once you've built that consistency and that conviction and that skill set, then, of course, you can go ahead and do the real thing. But guys, just because it's easy to get access to funding capital, and when I say easy, I don't mean easy to pass the challenge, I mean easy to literally just pay and then get the account. That's literally what it is. And because the barrier of entry is so low, you may feel like you have to keep doing it, or you may feel bad for passing it. No, it's, it's really, it's nothing to do with that. Take a break, go back on demo, go back and back test, build your confidence up again, and then go ahead and attempt it again once you're ready. And the thing is, you don't even have to do a funded account to be successful. You, there's something called compounding. If you don't know what compounding is, yo, that's a whole nother conversation for another day. But yeah, if you did fail, so what, man? Learn from your mistakes, figure out what caused that so that if you do go to do it again, you can prevent yourself from making the same mistakes.
Now, when you do eventually pass, because you've built that consistency and you've gone ahead and do it, your goal should now be to withdraw as quickly as you can. Don't leave a buffer in the account. Don't try to compound this account because if you fail the challenge, they're taking all your money, right? Your goal should be to withdraw as frequently and as often as you can so that you can go ahead and build your own personal account as well. We want ownership. You see, when you're a funded trader, you're not a funded trader, you're a contractor. You're essentially being employed by them to trade their capital. But that's a whole nother combo for another day. So you're probably wondering, why is there a duck on the screen right now? To be honest with you guys, the audio on the original outro did cut out. So what we're gonna do is you can just quickly enjoy this duck whilst, I, <laughs> whilst I'll just quickly wrap this video up, family. So remember, when it comes to these funded accounts, right? Yes, they can be good. They can be great tools, which can allow you to get more capital. But of course, remember the nature of the business model, which means that the actual people behind the challenges, they're making a lot more profit from people losing the challenge. So I say that to say this, don't rush into the challenge. There's no rush. Make sure that you fully prepared yourself. You've back tested your system, you know, and you trust your system and you can execute your system too. Once you've been able to got that baseline of consistency where you can grow your own account at least three months straight by at least 10%, of course, go for the challenge, but don't rush in not being prepared because you've got some sort of financial goal that you have a burning desire to achieve. You remember, when it comes to trading, your motivation should not be into actually trading and placing trades. Your motivation should be into your craft and becoming the best possible trader and the best possible analyst that you can be. And once you focus on the craft, once you develop your skill sets, then one, passing these challenges will not be a problem. So if that being said, family guys, do not forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And of course, if you guys do want any sort of access to my mentorship, you guys can message me on my Instagram. We'll have a conversation and we'll be able to see what is possible. So with that being said, guys, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And with that being said, I'm gonna see you all at the top from the top because <laughs> you already know, man, the bottom's way too crowded. Sheesh.